Good morning! This will be a very quick update because I have to walk my dog and go to work. <laughs> but um, there was news released yesterday and I thought that I would just present it to you here quickly because maybe you haven't heard. Um, we've been following Melissa Caddick's case. So Melissa Caddick is the, the fraudster businesswoman who disappeared from Sydney last November. Partial remains identified as Melissa Caddick's partial remains um, washed up on a beach south of Sydney recently. I don't know that Melissa's been officially um, named as deceased, but obviously it's most likely that she is deceased. There's a lot of speculation about Melissa having removed her own foot either surgically or otherwise I, I don't think she's done this although you know it's interesting how much money she was moving around I mean you know a bit of cash could buy something but to me that just means then there is a woman on the lamb that is even more identifiable now because she's the woman with one foot so What's happened is what we call the Australia's corporate watchdog, ASIC. ASIC have brought 39 new charges against Melissa Caddick, and I guess this would be against her estate, just against her legally. Yes, you can do it, um, even though she could be deceased. The charges include 19 charges of, well, basically lying about having... A current financial um, services license she didn't have a license to be controlling and um, taking charge of people's funds for investments um, I think even she may have been using her husband Anthony Coletti's father's license um, or somewhat, yeah, she was she was using someone else's license anyway um, to make it appear as if it was hers and as if she was legally above board in providing the type of financial services that she lied and said she was providing. 18 charges are, you know, just for, yeah, dishonesty and... Um, it's interesting because she, she set up her company Maliva when she married Anthony Coletti and I'd like to find out, I'm going to have to do some research into what liability her husband might have just as, just as her husband as far as her estate and his responsibilities to do with her estate um you know you'd, you'd hope that if he's nothing to do with her business legally i mean he's not liable for anything to do with maliva but then again you know i think it still needs to be determined what anthony coletti knew um what sort of arrangement is it as you know even his own family seems to say, um, is it the case that while well, Anthony was actually, you know, just purely in love with Melissa, maybe a little bit in awe of Melissa, he really believed that this woman was successful, brilliant, rich, and that she had chosen him. And maybe this was a little bit flattering and he enjoyed the lifestyle. I mean, but you know, you do need to wonder, was he complicit in some way because he's married to her he's sharing his life with Melissa Caddick she's operating her business from home he is very aware of how she is grooming clients you know did he what was he just so you know perhaps he was just completely in the dark you know but then, if he's completely in the dark, why has he waited the 30 hours? Is it because he really thought um, she was so innocent and she's begged him 
to let her get away so that she can, you know, fight for her freedom and declare her name from the safety of somewhere? Is this how, you know, she sold it to him? Or did he not speak up for 30 hours because uh, he wanted the child to go cold? Because we know that there is a time frame after someone is missing that is crucial. And we know people manipulate um, this time frame as often as possible when they are guilty. And... You know, so let's look at it this way. If Barry Morphew was guilty, would he have urged someone to call 911? He could have quite um, feasibly, nearly, have said, no, we didn't want it, we didn't call authorities because, you know, Suzanne had been saying she just needed some space recently, etc. I mean, they could have framed it anyway. If Barry Morphew wanted to... Um, put that very important distance between him murdering his wife Suzanne and law enforcement, well, he would have somehow ensured that law enforcement wasn't called that Monday night, maybe. Unless, of course, there was more distance because Suzanne was actually murdered far earlier than... The Mother's Day Sunday and he knows it, you know, who knows. Um, but, you know, this is an interesting point about Anthony Coletti. It's something you can't move past. It's a fact that Anthony Coletti did not advise law enforcement that his wife was missing, that she didn't come home from a walk during all this intensely stressful going-ons. On November the 12th it was midday November the 13th and <clears throat> I've said it before but you know look at the press conference where he's talking a week after a disappearance and urging her to come home and everything and just look at the look that Anthony um, and uh, Melissa Caddick's brother is giving Anthony it's it's curious to me it's very curious but anyway, so charges have been brought. The investigation is moving forward. It doesn't halt because a foot and a running shoe turn up. Um, you know, it, it's highly likely that Melissa killed herself. And, and this is devastating. But I also think... I think there is a possibility, a strong possibility, I can't, I, I don't know, that she was murdered. What do you think? Do you think Anthony not speaking up speaks to her running away and someone else murdering her or her running away and she was, betray yeah, she's betrayed or she she, she ran away and, and, and committed suicide or, or do you think it you know, shines a light suspiciously onto Anthony because maybe he was so betrayed and he's feeling like he is just, I mean, you know, it could have been, I mean, he seems so cool, calm and collected in the press, press release um, or the press interview really and it's, is it because he really is thinking she's alive somewhere? He didn't know that she was going to turn up in the ocean. Yeah, I'm not. Or was it because, well, he, you know, this is the same thing as I've said, okay, in the Barry Morphew case, for example, Suzanne Morphew case. You know, an early video I made was, you know, there's reasons why people are cool, calm and collected. And now, you know, one might be, well, Barry, he, he's a volunteer firefighter. He has attained the position to be that in the community. They don't let just any Tom, Dick and Harry in. Um, you have to be heavily vetted and you have to have skills. You have to be good under pressure. Um, and is this just why Barry seemed to be so 
self-possessed because he's in action mode or you know on the flip side is it because you know he uh he knows what happened it's reconciled in his mind you know and um and that's why he can be a certain way you know and is it like this with anthony coletti which side of the coin are we looking at you know um maybe he's just able to cope um maybe he he thought that she was alive and just hiding and maybe he really believed what he was saying or maybe he thought um you know he'd gotten away with murder You know, because he's left having to face speculation and everything. His whole life now, he'll be under question. And it's, you know, um, there's always so many innocent parties. Whenever any crime is committed, you know, what about her son? 15 years old, 14, 15 years old. That is, you know, it's a crucial time Did did Anthony believe there's no way Melissa would leave her son? Um, well, when you're suicidal, you're not rational and you think you are saving people from the shame of having to, you know, you think you're saving people from things, okay? This is so misunderstood. Unless you're in that position, you, you don't know what that pain feels like and it's not the rational human mind. It's a different sort of... <sighs> response and thought pattern that you're having when you're suicidal okay so you can't say you know oh what a bit should you know to leave her son you have to look at that compassionately she didn't do it to hurt him maybe she thought she was protecting him from all her you know the repercussions of her choices you know you don't know um so it's it's a curly one in this regard You know, we've got convicted child abusers who are blaming children for the murder of Barry Morphew. <sighs> Saying that they are, you know, there's a daughter that's a deranged killer and... And that, you know... Okay, well then I guess, you know, it's Barry acting as the um, alpha father protecting his cubs, you know. It's it's very tricky when you're commentating about, you know, familial relationships. You know, it's it to me it comes down to that that expression Happy families are all happy in the same way. Unhappy families are all different, you know. Um, you can speculate to the cows come home. How many times have you been utterly shocked to, to learn when crimes have been committed, when years later or, you know, during investigations or whatever, when you find out the utter bizarro worlds that some families have as their reality you would never know we don't know what the morphew family reality is to, you know outwardly actually it looks like a perfect life and a lovely family and you know a glamorous family and a family that um enjoyed life and enjoyed each other uh, and then, of course, you know, these big mysteries come along and it, it can inspire some pretty bizarre thinking. But it's because, you know, people obviously, it, there's a strong need. We just need to know things, don't we? We need answers in life, right? We need to understand life. We want to be able to understand life <laughs> for ourselves. Sometimes understanding bizarro worlds, though, it doesn't help you in your own life because everyone um, has their own set of circumstances. Um, you know, 
we've got I'll just say his initials MS we've got MS putting down a theory as if he is you know so genius and he's listing all these details about the Barry Morpheus timeline and how he has buried Suzanne under the Broomfield wall um, but there's so many holes in his story but he's laying them out like fact um, and then what happens is people start just talking about this regurgitated shit again um, such as assuming Barry Morphew had the bobcat in Broomfield did he did he you sure about that MS no nah, you're talking out of your bum so and it's just illogical I mean it's possible but it's just illogical um, to think that someone is going to put their uh, the wife that they've just murdered at a place where they can be instantly connected to um, yeah so you know everyone seems to be fair game and I guess you know I'm querying Anthony Coletti as fair game because he yes he might look I'm a naive person I really am and um because I, I don't like trickery trickery I'm not one of those people that likes pranks or anything like that I really I like straight upness I, I like frankness um I prefer just to be told things. I don't like when you go away from a situation and then you think about it and you ruminate on it and someone's being cruel or whatever it is, you know. I, I appreciate upfrontness and this is just because of how my brain works. And, I, I, you know, I get there eventually, but I'm not always looking out for that negativity or that slyness or that, you know, I, I want to be able to trust. Um but thinking about that in terms of Anthony Coletti, yes, is he, you know, just this young, naive, well, he's not young anymore, but he, you know, he was. Um, Melissa Caddick was in a position of sort of power when they met. Um, she was an older woman. I mean, look, I've been the older woman with, you know, men 12 years younger that I um, have had relationships with and, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be this power thing. Um, but, you know, I, I think in his situation it would have been that way. She, she had the personality and the she had the, um, you know, she swept him off his feet, so to speak. Um, it, it's something that you devise to do. It's not organic, it's not sort of natural, maybe. And was this facade, how was this maintained for their seven or eight year marriage um, without him knowing anything? Is it because he's just truly so disconnected from, you know, he was just not paying attention, not curious, I, I'm not... I just can't work that out because seven years is a reasonable amount of time and you do get to know people and you see things over this period of time and, you know, you hope that actually love does deepen because you see a person as human and, you know, being able to love all of someone is very important. Um, love fails when you can only love someone in their idealistic in, in the way that you idolize them or idealize them. Um, you know, because love is so, it's such an active thing. It's, it's an act of um, consciousness and, yeah, it, it, to love someone is hard, right? Um, so... I wish I could, uh, yeah, I, I'm very, very interested in finding out what happens with Anthony and with Adam, Melissa's brother. Um, 
who did seem very intensely emotional at that press release. But, um, you know, it's got to be difficult for him because Melissa Caddick ripped off her own parents for $1 million. And that they're not, she didn't come from a wealthy family. She's been someone who has been an ambitious young lady. Did you know that for a firm that Melissa Caddick worked in in her 20s, she was discovered to have written checks for $5,000 and $10,000. Now they stealing from the company and they've let it slide. Now what happens in these instances, just in my opinion, is I think they've thought, look, our business relies on trust and we can't openly say, look, here's what we've done. One of our staff members was um, a thief and we don't worry, we've found her, we've let her go and we will improve our vetting, we will improve our processes. I mean, surely that would grow more trust, I don't know. But, you know, so she hasn't been stopped then and there. So she's been able to go on and work for other companies, even large charities and things, I believe. So she has learned the ropes of money of because, you know, yeah, she's been able to continue in this profession. She's been able to see how different fundraising works, how networking works. And that's the main thing. She's been able to network in the industry where she started off fraudulently. And she ended that way. Um, sorry, this is really, really scattered. I really must go and walk a carnivore dog. Um... That's not him barking, by the way, if you can hear it. He's not an unhappy little sausage like that. Um, it always distresses me when, when neighbourhood dogs, they bark day and night. They, they're, al they're alone. They are anxious. Uh, they're not getting their needs met. I see a lot of people... Um, where they've adopted dogs that have been traumatized already by, you know, and they've been through several homes and they need um, to be adopted. They need the person, like the foster people or the, the rescue group, to take great pains with who they adopt this dog to because it needs someone that's with them pretty much 24 7. And yet they are adopted to someone that's working 12 hour shifts and they don't have the dog with them. The dog is alone and then the dog's getting behaviours and then these people are brutalising these dogs further by putting bark collars on them, etc. Um, I mean, human beings, we're not logical creatures. It's surprising with all of this that we have, how illogical we can be and especially we're forcing our illogic and um, unnecessary suffering onto logical, very present animals. Um, anywho, far out, man. Um, thanks for being here again. Just wanted to update you about Melissa Caddick and the 39 charges that have been brought against her. 19 of them were for... Uh, lying about having a financial investor's license, having the right license to perform the work that she was taking money off people for. And 18 of those charges, yeah, just were, um, yeah, dishonest dealings and things like that. So I don't know what the other two are for, but um, yeah, just an update. And I will speak to you anon. Bye.